Okay, let's uh, restart class. So, we're talking about the uh, treaty negotiation. And we, we didn't mention tactics, we talked about deal design. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is setup. So, we already asked what does setup mean? It means to start or to stay. So, here we can see what we're talking about is negotiation moves away from the table. But negotiation moves is like chess. In chess, you make some move, right? So some move, that, that's what they're talking about here. So you, you do something away from the table. You understand table? When we talk about negotiation, we talk about the table where we actually negotiate. That set up, that made the most promising situation once you're at the table. So before you get to the table, before you negotiate, you try to set things up. So when you get to the table, you have the best situation. Promising means best. If the setup is not right, we go away from the table again and take action away from the table to make it better. For win-lose people, if the setup is not right, they still stay at the table and they still try to win by using threatening, uh, demanding, intimidating, and so on. Okay? For the win-win people, they, even though the setup is not right, they still stay at the table and they try to make it right by using some tactic or cooperation or something like that, right? But in this case, if it's not set up right, they won't come to the table in the first place, okay? Or else they'll go away and come back. Make sure that the setup is right. So we'll explain about that using some examples too. So what do we want in the setup? So here's some vocabulary about negotiation. The first one is parties. What does parties mean? People, right? How do you say parties in Korea? People who are taking part. That's what it means. They're taking part in the negotiation. Participants. Okay, the right uh, sequence means that things are done in the right order. Do you understand issues? Yes. Right, the right things to talk about. The right interests. The right table. So it means where? Where is the right place to have a negotiation? Okay, the right time. For example, I tell my wife if she comes home and she's very tired from work and then she's quite angry because something happened at work, is that a good time for me to negotiate with my wife? No. <laughs> no, it's not, right? So I just avoid the negotiation and try to make the negotiation on a Sunday afternoon when both people is calm and quiet, quiet? It's a little bit better. So the right time, the right expectation, people have to expect, nobody has a false expectation, right? We don't give somebody some false idea. And the right consequences for walking away. Do you understand consequences? What does consequence mean? Result, right? So if I walk away from the table, there, have, there is some consequence. I get some bad uh, result. So I can't walk away easily. So we want to set up uh, those kind of situations. So it's easier when we look at an example. Do you know staples? Do you have staples in Korea? You do? Where? Yes, in Korea. Everywhere. Really? Where? Give me one example. Near my house. Near your house? Do you guys know staples? No? You know what a stapler is, right? And staples go into a stapler. But staples is the name of a store. It's a stationary store. Do you understand stationary? Stationary is paper, things we need for the office, for small businesses, like 
uh, paper clips, you know, paper clip, notebooks, all of those, it sells all of those kind of things. So, anyway, I was going to show you a picture of the store, but it's a little bit slow. So, this founder of Sables, his name is Thomas Stenberg, he got the money to start his company from venture capitalists. So, in the US, Venture capitalists are quite popular because the biggest step for any company in the life cycle of a company is here. Getting from here to here, right? So you have your idea, you have a great idea, but you want to get from your idea to growth. Okay, let's say you're Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, he said that at the start he thought Facebook would be just for three or four hundred people in Harvard University would use Facebook, right? So he had this idea. So his problem is, how can I get from three or four hundred people in Harvard to get to the growth stage? So venture capitalists can help a lot. Okay? What they do, they provide money and know-how. Do you understand know-how? They know people. They know how to do things. They have contacts and networks. They can introduce you to more people. So they think Mark Zuckerberg has a very good idea. Like famous singer Bono, he invested. He's rich, he has a lot of money. So he bought some of the company. What they do is they buy a part of the company. So I will buy 40% of your company, right, for $1 million. So you have your idea. You don't want to give away your company to other people. But you need money. Okay, so you meet the venture capitalist, he gives you one million dollars, or she gives you one million dollars, and you give them 40% of your company. So they're going to get a share in your profits. So Bono, who invested in Facebook, he made a really big profit when Facebook went public. He sold his percentage of stock, makes a lot of money. So venture capitalist is quite risky business. They go around, they give money to maybe 20, 30, 40 startup companies, they hope just one of those startup companies is successful. They expect maybe most of them will fail, right? But if one is successful, then I can make a lot of money. That's what venture capitalists do. Okay. If, uh, they, for business, they can get no, because they're not, but they're not giving a loan, they're buying equity or stock in the company. So if this, the company goes out of business, the people who lend money will get back money, lenders. But venture capitalists take ownership, ownership of the company. So this guy had venture capitalists. They helped him. His company was growing. He wanted more money. He says, I need more money to grow more. So he, he went back to the same guys and he asked them for a second round of financing of money. Okay, to the same group of people said, I want more money, I'll sell you more of my company, you give me more money, okay? So, the venture capitalist refused to value the company as highly as he hoped. So, for example, he said, I'm going to sell you now 20% more of the company, but now it costs 5 million, because I'm doing better, okay? But they said, no, we want 30% of your company and we want to pay just 3 million. Okay, so they have a different idea about how much to pay. And then his problem is he went to one, to two, to three, to many different venture capitalists in his area. And he asked them, and they all said no. They all said the same. Okay, so it was kind of like a cartel. Do you understand a cartel? A cartel is when a group of people agree to fix the price. Do you understand fixing the price? Yes. Keeping the price the same. So all of these venture capitalists, their group, they knew each other. So they decided, sometimes they decide, well, he can't, we're just going to all say the same price, and then in the end, he has to agree. So what do you think? How can he break this cartel? What would you advise him to do? Under the lose-lose, win-lose situation, He's going to threaten them, right? He's going to say, pay me this money or else I'm going to 
run the company into the ground or leave the company, it would be a disaster, right? Under the win-win situation, he'll try to negotiate and cooperate with them nicely, right? But they're, they're not going to change their price. So what can he do? Does anybody have a suggestion? How can he break the cartel? Do you understand break the cartel? Yes. What would you do if you were him? All the venture capitalists is joined together. They're all saying price which is too cheap. Okay. So what are you going to do?
to get the low price. Okay? So when he found somebody else who was willing to buy at the high price, then the cartels, they stopped the cartel and they said, okay, we'll buy at the high price. So he changed the setup. And not just this rich guy, he also approached some other. He approached the, some hedge fund, do you understand hedge fund? Or so on. Not venture capitalists, another type of investment people. And he asked them to invest. And some of them agreed to invest at his price. So the difference in this is that the win-lose people, and even the win-win people, they're just going to try and use some tactic to make a better deal with the venture capitalists. Okay? But this is changing the setup of the negotiation. Finding the right players. So go away from the negotiating table, right? Do something else. Changing the setup of the negotiation. Then come back to the negotiating table. It's a different setup. Now I have an offer from somebody else. Okay? So I can use this to get a better deal. Do you have any question about that part? Or that story? Do you like Staples shop? No? Do you shop there? No? So that is explaining about setup. Okay? So then uh, let's move on to the next part. Uh, creating and claiming value. So you mentioned about creating value between people. So everybody should have the same objective in a negotiation. The objective is to create and claim value for the long term by crafting, making and implementing a deal that is satisfactory, good for both or all parties. So the key word here is long term. So we want to create value for the long term. So we talked about this before here. We said that you can have a one-shot negotiation, one-time negotiation. Can you give me an example of a one-time negotiation that you would do? You only meet that person once in your life. You're never going to see them again. Can you give me an example? <clears throat> a negotiation where you only have to deal with that person once in your life. You're negotiating with them. For example, over price. Consultant? Yes. 
it's a special consultant for doing a job that he's never going to do again, right? Like just a consultant for checking the environmental part of our factory. Once that's finished, we'll never see him again, okay? So we could make a very bad deal with this consultant. Problem is our reputation. This consultant might tell the other consultants, oh, BMW is very bad to work for, right? They gave me a very bad deal. They made me work way too much, and they didn't pay enough money. So even though it's a one-shot negotiation, for companies the problem is reputation. We do a very bad deal, the person we give the very bad deal to, go online, right? In Korea you like blogging online, right? Do you guys ever do any complaining online? No? Do you ever read about people complaining online? Do you check about companies or things online? People complained about that? Yes. Restaurants or so on, right? So, you give me a very bad deal. I can, nowadays with the internet or community, I can give you a bad reputation later. And so even the one-shot negotiation, you should be thinking about long-term, right? And then long-term relationship, we already mentioned, we want the parties to live up to their side of the bargain. Live up to your side of the bargain. What does that mean? What does it mean to live up to my side of the bargain? What do you think? Just carry out my side. Finish what I said. Do what I said. This just means do what I said. So, if I make a bad deal, we said that uh, the tire company, Hanguk, could make a bad quality tire, right? Use the cheaper material. Then they're not living up to their side of the bargain. They're not doing what they said. So if we want, we want to create value, we want to create value for the long term, for both people. Okay? So we have to think about those things. <coughs> so let's look at the question. What kind of things can create value? You think about you or about companies. So you said that when you negotiate with someone, you think about creating value for both people. Can you give an example of what kind of value can you create for you or for the other person? About what is value? What kind of things give you value? Do you get value from? What do you want? So money is the most obvious one, right? Do you want need to give you a Pac-Man one? <laughs> yes or no? I well, do you want me to give you Pac-Man one? A million more? By having an envelope? Will you take it? It's good. Do you want it or not? No? You don't like money? No value? Money has no value? Yes, money has value. You can buy things, right? You can buy a bicycle or books. Right? So if I give you money, you're getting value. What else can make value apart from money? Can we only think about money in a negotiation or other things can make value? Relationship, right? We talked about a good relationship with the person. What else can make value? Reputation, yes. Okay, I get a good reputation at the end of the negotiation or good image. What else can make value? Quality of service, right? Anything else? Stay over it. Stay over it. Durability. Okay, so there are a lot of things we can do that can create value. Most people talk about money, discounted cash flow. So if you study financial management, you'll know that 
money in the future needs to be discounted to today's value. So we make a deal in six months, you're going to pay me a million dollars. How much is that worth today? Right? You have to discount it. Uh, precedent, relationships, reputation, political appearance, appearance to people. So if Korea gets docked up, the Korean government gets to put the flag on docked up, they get some good political appearance. That's value. They'll get votes in the next election. People will vote for them, right? Fairness. Do you understand fairness? People like being treated fairly. Self-image. Okay, the image of the people. So we can think about all of these things when we're thinking about creating value in, and other things too in a negotiation. Then claiming value, what does claiming value mean? If I claim something, it's a little bit like taking. So this is a competitive side of negotiations. So we're going to make, try to make as big value as we can, make as big a pie. Do you understand pie? Yes. Pizza pie or other pie. We want to make as big. In negotiations, you can, we talk about making the pie bigger. We can make it bigger, right? My sister and my brother, first of all, the pie is just watch one program. But if we use the video recorder, we can make the pie bigger to watch two programs. Okay? But to make claiming value, I want to get the bigger slice of the pie. Slightly, which side is bigger? Left. This one is slightly bigger. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can do a very good job, right? I should do something like this. But now which side is bigger? This one, right? Yes. So I want this one and not this one. We made the pie bigger. But I want to get slightly better to you than the other person. Okay, so I want to watch the TV program now, not after one hour. Okay, so that's claiming value. We talk about this. This is a little bit competitive. So we get a bigger slice of pie. So we want to both create and claim value in the long term, in the negotiation. Okay, we want to make create the biggest value we can, the biggest pie we can, and then we want to claim slightly more than the other side. We don't want to be slightly less than the other side. So when we are doing this, we want to ask the question, what are the barriers to creating value, and what are the barriers to claiming value? Do you understand barrier? What does barrier mean? Something protecting or stopping, right? So what is stopping? us creating value, what is stopping us from claiming value? Then we answer those questions, it can help us to create and claim value. So we'll, this is overview. So during the course we are going to talk more about design and setup, okay? So don't worry if you don't get understand now, that's okay because we're going to spend time during the course, right? You understand overview? Overview means just talking about the kind of generally, right? Uh, later we'll talk about it in more detail. So then let's move on to start talking about the course. Start the course, right? That was just overview. We're going to study about win-win negotiation and we're going to study about 3D. 3D is tactics, deal design and setup. And in all negotiations, we want to create value. Okay, so we're going to start with preparing for a negotiation. So the first question we're going to ask is, should I negotiate? So this part is, the last part was based on the book. So this was, if you read chapter one in the book, you can get this overview. This is just chapter one in the book, okay? So this part starting here is going to be uh, using the uh, online course. So this is the online course. Uh, do you, do you, have you taken any online course before or seen this websites before? Yes? There are two main websites for online courses. There's edX, there are a lot of them, but two, there's only two that I use really because they're the best ones, right? edX and Coursera. edX is more focused on just some top U.S. university like Harvard and MIT. Coursera, there's more European and global universities involved in this one, right? 
So this course is from the University of Michigan. This guy has been teaching association there for a lot of years. So just when you go to Coursera, we'll use the internet in the next class and everybody will sign in to the course, right? You can do it home first if you want. Okay? So you go to Coursera.org, just type in negotiation and you'll find this course. Right? Or just you can just type into Google, Coursera, negotiation skill, and you'll find this course. You can si sign in. If not, we'll do in the next class. So, uh, this course, the way this course is structured is we're doing now to prepare for the negotiation using tactics, creating contracts, and practicing skills, right? So we're here at the moment, it's just week two. Should I negotiate or not? So that's just the background information that uh, we'll be using. So let's look at the first question. Discuss with your partner. Have you ever tried to negotiate about a price where you don't normally? So normally you negotiate about the price at a market or somewhere like that, right? But it might not be a price about anything. So have you tried to negotiate where it's not normal place to negotiate? So discuss with your partner. Did anybody do this? I heard you explaining about 
like going to another store <laughs> and the store manager maybe they own the store so they cared sometimes the shopkeeper doesn't care they don't own the store right? so they called you back so we have an assignment for next week guess what your assignment is for next week yes hmm? you have to try to negotiate a lower price when buying something so not in a, not like in the market, right? So when you're buying something, you can try to get like that lady some gift, right? Or just try to negotiate a lower price. Maybe it will be uncomfortable, but just you're just trying just to see, right? Just try to negotiate. So you don't have to. Tell your mother you need to buy a dress for Peg Man One for your class. Practice, right? Practice negotiation. But uh, this weekend or just next week before the next Tuesday, are you going to buy something before next Tuesday? Maybe you go to the restaurant. Do you eat in the restaurant sometimes? Hmm? Or the PC bank? Do you go to the PC bank? Hmm? No? What are you going to buy before next Tuesday? Bookstore. Book? So I'll try to negotiate. If you like, you can make a strategy like she did, like you saw the book at a lower price in another store or that kind of thing, right? Or you can tell them some sad story. <laughs> right? So just try to negotiate, try some way to get it and then tell us how you got on. Okay, then we'll see who was able to get the lower price or not. So do you, do you have any question? Do you understand the assignment? Yes? Okay, next question. How do you feel when negotiating? So discuss with your partner. Do you enjoy negotiating? You don't enjoy negotiating? How do you feel? I'm 
Yeah, so first you can tell me if you enjoy it or not, and then how do you feel? So Yang Nong Sok, do you enjoy it or not? Don't you enjoy it, so how do you feel? And give me some adjective to describe how you feel. You can say the adjective in Korean if you want, and people can translate. Do you understand the adjective? So how do you how does that make you feel? Not good? What kind? Can you think of a more descriptive adjective? Good or not good is a very simple adjective. Do you feel embarrassed, terrible, <laughs> ashamed, nervous, ashamed, shame? Can I uh, e some hop? Not here. Uh, e chunky. I think enjoy the negotiation. Enjoy, how do you feel? to negotiate for you, right? So then let's have a look at this question. A negotiation professor buys a big screen TV. He does a lot of research on different models and cost. He visits several different shops or dealers uh, and he puts the price of the TV together with installation, satellite dish like in Korea, right? Put those things together and other features. He obtains a price concession, price reduction, because like you, he mentioned the competitor's offer. 
and as a result, he saves $120. Now, what do you think about this? Was that a successful negotiation or not a successful negotiation? He spent 20 hours visiting the stores and searching online and doing the research. So, what do you think? So, was it a successful or not successful negotiation? Okay, he spent 20 hours researching, visiting different places. He made a concession of $120 in the end. Okay, hands up, who thinks it's successful? Who thinks it's not successful? So why do you think it's not successful? He lost his opportunity cost. Yes. So how much, for one hour, how much did he save for one hour's work? 20 hours, $120. What's one hour? 20 divided by 120? $6. Six dollars. Very good. Who said $6? You did? Yes. You take all the finance classes. All right. Oh, it's six dollars for one hour. How much does he earn more than that, right? Is it really worth him doing that? Maybe if he really enjoys that kind of thing, doing the research and visiting stores. But most people don't enjoy visiting stores and researching online. So I guess it's not worth it. Okay? So now we have to think about the cost and the benefit of the time we're going to spend preparing for the negotiation. Uh, I read some blog, online blog of some famous people, sometimes, it's one advantage of modern living, you can follow or read the online blog of some very famous people, right, smart people. So one guy says that everything he does, he puts into the money per hour. So, uh, for example, he has to drive to the shop to buy a new, something new for his computer, takes him 30 minutes to drive and 30 minutes to drive back and the cost of his time is going to be, say, he values his time at something like $50 an hour that's what his time costs, right? so he, he, he adds on an extra $50 to the time to travel to the shop and back so he's going to order online, buy online, right? it's quicker and it doesn't take as much time so the one reason I like Korea, I can do a lot of online shopping. I do a lot of online shopping. I hardly ever go to the store anymore because I really don't like shopping. It takes a long time to go to the store, right? Also for fixing things by himself. A lot of people try to fix things by themselves. He says, this is my time, so it's better just to pay. What about cutting the lawn? Do you think he cuts his own lawn? He can pay a teenager local teenager $5 or $10 an hour to cut his lawn. Do you think he cuts his own lawn? In Korea you don't have many lawns, you mostly live in an apartment. But in the US a lot of people have a lawn, garden, grass outside their house. They need to cut the grass, right? So what do you think, this guy, does he pay the local teenager or does he cut the lawn himself? Pays the local teenager, right? He values his time as $50 an hour. Local teenager asks for $5. So he's not, he doesn't wash his car or he doesn't do any of those things. Because he, can, he values, he makes something for valuing his own time. What do you think about his idea? But he like the shopping. I shopping. No. Do you think this idea is an unsuccessful one or a bad idea? You don't like the guy's idea? Oh, no, this one. The guy who's who made this is different. Different guy who made uh, his uh, job. Actually, I think he's a Korean American. He made that idea that his time is worth so much. So you could make the same thing. How much your time is worth? Right? It will go up as you get older. Your time will be worth more money. And then things which are he can pay other people to do for cheaper than he doesn't do. So 
So that's, we can use that idea when we're thinking about this. So some people love to negotiate, some people have no problem. Other people might ask, is this the way we want to spend our time on Earth, right? So uh, I think we may have done enough for today. Or oh, sorry, just we have two slides, so we just finished the last two slides. Uh, what do you have the time? What time is it now? 3.20. Okay, then we'll finish that in the next uh, class. Okay, you can read this case, uh, similar to the last one, just some case about negotiation. So then just remember to do your assignment before the next class. Well, just try to negotiate for some. At least try. If you're not successful, it's okay. No, no, just tell me.